Have you ever stopped to think just how much money you poured into car ownership over your lifetime? I just did, and today I'm going to reveal the jaw-dropping figure of what 30 years of car ownership has really cost me. I'm also going to tell you how many cars, as well as how much money the average American spends in their lifetime in car ownership. Let's begin with my case. In 1992, I bought my very first car. So that means that as of the making of this video, I started buying cars slightly over 30 years ago. And 30 years is the typical length of a mortgage on a home. But I have only been a homeowner for 19 years. So in hindsight, I can only wonder what life will be for me if I had prioritized home ownership instead of buying cars left and right. I could easily own the title to my property and be so far ahead financially by now. The average American buys a total of 9.4 vehicles in their lifetime, and I have bought 19 cars so far. So I doubled the statistic, and because I'm only 50 and not planning on dying anytime soon, I need to fix my car buying habits. I dove into the internet to find out just how much money the average American spends on car ownership in their lifetime, and I found different numbers, but I'm going to go with one published by, it's called doughroller.com, $443,800. How do I compare to this astronomical number? Let's see. But first, I'll be interested to hear from you. Let me know in the comments how old you are, how many cars have you purchased, and how much has this cost you? I made a quick uh, spreadsheet listing all the cars and how much money I have paid for each, how much I sold it for, what I paid in sales tax, interest, but as you will see, I'm going to be missing some important expenses that I omitted merely because I just don't remember certain particulars about these transactions. I just don't have the mental capacity to make calculations on things like insurance, repairs, customization, and fuel. I just remember that for the first few years that I was driving, I hardly ever had insurance. And it started in 1992 at the age of 19 with the purchase of a 1983 Ford Mustang. It was a good car that served the purpose at the time. I paid $3,500. I drove it to the ground and sold it for $600 about four years later. Adjusted to inflation today, the car would have cost me $5,560. Then I bought a 1986 AMC Jeep CJ7. I only had it for a year and I paid $4,200 and I sold it a year later for $4,500 and I made $300. And as you're going to see in this video, that was the only time that I ever bought a car that I sold it for more. It was a good car that was just wasn't what I needed at the time. It was inconvenient, uncomfortable, and horrendous on gas mileage. I moved on to a 1988 Toyota pickup. They were not called Tacomas yet, and I bought it for $5,000 and sold it for $3,500. It was low in maintenance, like typical Toyota, um, but I spent a lot of money customizing that truck, but I won't get into those details. At that time, my brother offered to give me a car for free, so I sold the pickup just to use the money for college. <laughs> The car my brother gave me was a 1988 BMW 325i. It was uh, for free, but it cost me $2,000 in repairs. And because I failed to maintain it properly, I had a bad engine about a, a year later and I sold it for $350. I just didn't maintain it properly. Then in 2002, I bought a 1999 Pontiac Grand Am GT for $7,200. It started having head gasket issues at about 43,000 miles. So I sold it for $3,500. It was just a bad car, had engine issues. So with such low mileage, um, just a bad experience in general. In 2003, I bought my first brand new car, a 2004 Acura TSX. And that's when the real money hemorrhage began as New cars cost a lot and depreciate quickly in the first couple of years. I bought it for $28,000 and sold it for $22,500. But notice how here the loan interest and the sales tax make a huge dent in anybody's finances. Over $4,800 just in financing and sales tax alone. That was my first ever finance vehicle. In 2006, I bought a 2006 Honda Civic SI. I paid $22,500 and I only kept it for about six months and sold it for, what was it, $19,500. It was a good car. It was just not for me. I upgraded to, in that same year, I upgraded to a 2007 Lexus IS350, which I leased. So in down payment and lease payments, it was $18,740. It was a good car, but I got a bad lease because I paid too much. Uh, lack of experience dealing with the opaqueness of lease contracts. Never do it again. 
In 2008, I bought a 2002 Nissan Maxima. I bought it for $7,000 and sold it for $3,500 seven months later. I only bought the car because I was getting up in miles on that lease and I just didn't want to put the miles on the lease. It was a big mistake. The Maxima had too many miles and gave me all kinds of problems. In 2009, I moved on to a new Honda Civic. I paid $19,500 and I sold it for $16,000 only six months later. It wasn't the right car for me because I guess I just missed the premium experience of a premium vehicle. So that same year, I went to Audi and upgraded to a 2009 Audi A4. It was a new model for that year that featured the cool LED daytime running lights that you see everywhere now. I love that car. I bought it for $37,500 and I traded it in for $31,000. It drove pretty nice, but it burnt a lot of oil. And I sold it because at the time, that's when I met my wife and she lived in a different state. And it was just not the right car to drive too many miles on. And so I moved on in 2011 to a Nissan Juke again. That same year, that was a new model. So it was a cool car, kind of weird looking, but it had a pretty good engine. It was a four cylinder 1.6 turbo with a six speed manual transmission. And I loved driving it, but it needed a new engine at 31,000 miles. And that new engine only had a warranty for one year. So I just didn't trust the vehicle out of warranty. And I sold it in 2013. I paid $21,000 and sold it for 13,500. In 2011, I bought a 2005 BMW 325i. It was mainly for my wife, but she hardly ever drove it because at the time she wasn't working. So we didn't put a lot of miles on the car. We decided to sell it at the same time that we sold the Nissan Juke in 2013. Um, that one, I bought it for 13,500 and sold it for 10,500. It was very clean, very well kept, very nice car. We just didn't need the car and because we were financing it was parking all the time. It just made no sense to keep it getting there. In 2013, we bought a 1993 Lexus SC300. It's a great car, very nice coupe. We bought it for $5,000, drove it for about two years, and then I gave it to my brother. It was very low in maintenance. We didn't put a lot of miles on the car, um, never broke down, typical Lexus, and we just gave it away because at the time I wanted something newer and my brother needed a car, so we just gave it to him. In 2015, we bought a 2011 BMW 328i. It was beautiful. It had 59,000 miles and we paid 18,500. It's in excellent shape and it drove amazingly when it did because after 85,000 miles like clockwork, it started having a lot of problems that amounted to expensive and constant repairs and we decided to let go of it and traded it in in 2018 for only $6,500. So I lost a lot of money in comparison to what I bought it for. In 2018, we bought a new Lexus. It was an RX350 for which I made a departure video that you could check out on this channel right here. It was very well equipped and we paid $52,000 for it. And in 2021, and after 33,000 happy miles, we sold it to CarMax for 34,000 miles. It was a $34,000. It was a great car, but we were just looking at Tesla for a while. So we decided to switch cars yet again. So that's when in 2021, I bought a brand new Tesla Model Y Performance. That was a very nice car. We loved it. It was our first ever electric vehicle. We never had an electric vehicle after that. It was a great experience, but as I stayed on my end of ownership video, it was just not the right car for us. We had it for 21 months and we put 26,000 miles. We paid 63,290 and sold it for $46,000 to CarMax. And those of you that have been following my channel will notice that I omitted two vehicles off this list. My 1989 BMW 325 that I bought in 2013 and the 2007 Acura TSX that replaced the Tesla Model Y. The reason why I didn't include these two vehicles is because I'm not done with them. I'm still driving them. I'm still spending money on them. And I just don't see, I just don't know how much money I'm gonna get when I sell them if I decide to get rid of any of these two cars. But more on that a little bit later. The total amount spent on car purchases alone is high opening to say the least. I have been making payments off and on for so many years that I lost perspective on just the high cost of car ownership. But it doesn't stop there. I wish it did <laughs> because cars come with ongoing expenses that can drain your wallet. And these expenses are hard to calculate at least they are for me. Things like fuel, regular maintenance, unexpected repairs, this added up significantly. Yet I decided to leave them out of this calculation because of the difficulty coming up with this number. Some of these cars were hit very hard by depreciation because as cars age, they just lose value, especially new cars in their first couple of years of ownership. And as you saw on my list, I had no shortage of new car acquisitions. It's crucial to understand how this impacts the total cost of ownership, especially long-term, as I said earlier. Now it's time to do the math. When we add all these expenses, purchase costs, financing, sales tax, and depreciation, the grand total is 
$197,000. And to make matters worse, if I were to add another nearly $60,000 in maintenance and fuel costs, not including inflation, the number will be a lot closer to $300,000. After three decades of car ownership, the total cost is nothing short of astonishing. A small mortgage. And what do I have to show for? Not one thing. But let's not make this video about regrets, but more of a reflection for those of you that are younger than me and can learn from my journey. It's not just about the numbers and cents, it's about the freedom, the adventures, and the memories that these vehicles have brought into my life. What could I have done differently? In my case, I believe that I could have had fewer cars, picked better cars, and just keep them for longer. There are a few vehicles that I bought and kept for a year or less, and that's clearly a mistake when you think about a car, only own it for a year. That means that you picked the wrong car. Was it worth it? I'll be honest. Honestly, some cars were worth it, others not so much. I'll never forget the sensation of owning my first car that I bought with my own money, my own savings at age 19. It felt like a big accomplishment. Just as much it meant for me to drive my first brand new car and what it meant for me because I had started doing better financially. I had graduated from college, gotten the better jobs. So driving that Acura TSX for almost three years and 54,000 miles felt pretty special every mile. And then there were the cars that I remember for the memories that I keep from gesture years. As I get older, I, I've changed my priorities for the better and I find more satisfaction in the experience that I share with my wife rather than buying a different car for the sake of it every couple of years. I'm happy with the two beaters that I have right now and they do the job and they cost next to nothing compared to driving new. Remember, the cost of car ownership is more than just the number. For some of us that look at cars as something more than just mere transportation is a reflection of a lifetime of experiences on the road. Thank you for watching and as always, if you like this video, consider subscribing, like the video. I'll see you next time.